الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيان الصلاة حيان الصلاة حيان الفلاح حيان الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعاذني الله واياكم منها. My dear brothers and sisters, this life, this dunya is nothing but a test. As Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Surah Al-Mulk, الذي خلق الموت هو الذي خلق الموت والذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. The one who created death and life in order to test you, in order to test you and to see who amongst you is the best in deeds. He did not say أكثر عملا. He didn't say most in deeds. He said, Ahsan Muhammad, best in deeds. And Allah Jalla wa'ala tests each and every one of us in different way. And he has mentioned Jalla wa'ala in the Quran, different ways in which he tests people. And he says, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ بِكْرَى And we test you with evil and with good as trial. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with trials and tribulations. Also with the bounties and the favors that he has bestowed upon us. These are also a form of test to see whether we are grateful and thankful to him, Jalla wa'ala. And this is from his wisdom, Jalla wa'ala, that he tests each and every one of us in a different way. And the everything that happens to us in this dunya, my brothers and sisters, is from Allah Azza wa There's a wisdom, there's a wisdom behind everything that happens to us. And for a believer, for me and you, my brother and sister, everything that happens to us, there is kept. There is good. And there are lessons that we can take from. Anything that happens to us of a calamity, of a trial, there is a blessing, and there is a lesson. 
that it's khairi, no matter what it is. Now, how did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam react towards these trials and tribulations? What was his son? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was asked one day, what was the most difficult day upon you, Rasulullah? And he replied, it was the day that I went to Ta'if. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam at this point, He's not a young man. He's relatively old. <coughs> Probably in his 50s, mid 50s, and so on. He's not, you know, in his 30s, mid, you know, youth, strong, and so on and so forth. Yet he travels on his own all the way from Mecca to Paris. And he is treated in a very, very humiliating way by the leaders of Ba'if. And one of them, just to give you an example of how they responded to Rasulullah sallallahu da'wah, he looked at Rasulullah sallallahu and said, did Allah not find anyone else other than you? Was there no one else that Allah could send? This is how they treated Rasulullah. <coughs> now they did not stop there. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam leaves them. And these people, these leaders of Ba'if, they order the people of the city to line up on the street and throw stones at him. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now when he finally finds refuge, saved from these people, and as the hadith mentions, the Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam comes down to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with the angel of the mountains. And he says, Muru ya Rasulullah, order him ya Rasulullah, tell him what to do. And so this angel says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, give me the order and I will squash the city between these two mountains. <laughs> What was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam response? Take revenge? Yes, squash them. May Allah destroy them. No. He said, no. No. Because maybe there will be from amongst their offspring people who say, la ilaha illallah. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam dealt with the trials that he faced. And some narrations also mention that at this point he made a dra. He made a dra. A fairly long dra. From amongst the same things that he said. In this dra, he says, Oh Allah, I complain to you of my weakness. I complain to you, Ya Allah, of my weakness. He didn't blame the people. He didn't blame Allah for putting, putting him in that situation. Rather, he blames himself. Maybe there was something that I did wrong. Maybe there was a shortcoming from me. And we know Rasulullah fulfilled his mission to the best. Yet, he looked at himself. And then at the very end he says, As long, Ya Allah, as there is no anger, that you have no anger over me, I am happy. As long as you are not angry with me, Ya Allah, I am happy. This is how Rasulullah <laughs> dealt with the trials and tribulations that he faced. And this is a lesson for us as well. And he said in another hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, no Muslim is afflicted with any harm, but that his sins will be unknown as the leaves of the tree falling down. As the leaves fall down from the tree, 
And another hadith, even if it's safe, uh, like a thorn. If it's just that small, but yet you have patience and sabr, Allah Azza wa Jal will erase sins. Yes, some things are harder than others. Some things are very difficult to cope with. Some trials are a lot harder than others. But ultimately, my brothers and sisters, it is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is all a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, my brothers and sisters, there are certain things in the Sharia of things that you can do that has no limits in terms of this reward. Most of the things, the, the reward has been numbered. As Rasulullah says in a hadith, I do not say Alif Lam Mim is one letter, rather I say Alif is one letter, Lam is one letter, and Mim is one letter. And you get 10 for each letter. As much or, or 700 or until Allah Azza wa so most of the things that we do are numbered in terms of its reward. But there are few acts of worship that have no limits. <coughs> From amongst those things is patience. Sabr. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُوَقَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ الْإِسَامِ بِغَيْرِ الْإِسَامِ those in, indeed, the patient ones, will be rewarded with that account. With as account, there is no limit to how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the one who has patience. And Allah Jalla also says in another ayah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْكَ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْسِنُونَ This ayah, my brothers and sisters, is a very powerful ayah. Allah says, and we will surely test you, and we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and life and fruits. But give good, but give good, glad tidings to those who have patience. Give glad tidings to those who have patience. Who, when disaster strikes them, they say, "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun." Indeed, we belong to Allah, and to Him we shall return. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy, and it is those who are the right to be these are the people who Allah Azza wa Jal, the ones who are patient, Allah Azza wa Jal, is promising them their reward. And this is something my brothers and sisters that they've, said, <coughs> they've used in their lives, as they were taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, Ajaban bin Amri al strange is the situation of the believer. Strange is the situation of the believer. And this only for the believer. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, that I saw to Barra, Sabra, Fakana Khayrala. When I saw Sabra to Sabra, Shakra Fakana Khayrala. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, Strange is the situation of the believer, and it's only for the believer. If a calamity befalls him, then he has patience. And that is better for him. And if something of good happens to him, then he is, and then he is grateful. So that is better for him. And so the life of a believer is between gratitude and patience. The life of a believer, my brothers and sisters, is between patience and gratitude to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Umar ibn Zubayr, a very famous tabi, implemented this in his life. 
just to give an example. He, Rahim Allah, was inflicted <coughs> with a disease, a cancer in his, in his leg. And so they were forced to amputate. They had to cut it at the knee, they cut the leg at the knee. And the very same night, the very same night, one of his children <coughs> passed away. And so when the news came to him, to Urwa, his response was very calm. Very calmly, he said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I have seven children, Allah took one. I have seven children, Allah took back one. I have four limbs, Allah took back one. I have three left. And I have six children. Alhamdulillah. Now, we're not saying that we have to be on that level. It is very difficult when someone loses a child. One of the most difficult trials upon a father is to lose a child in front of him. Very difficult trial. Yet, these are for us lessons. And there's nothing wrong with grieving or, being, or feeling sad when inflicted by a certain trial or tribulation. However, one should never cross the limits. One should never take it too far. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to have patience <coughs> when the trials and tribulations are fit to see For those of us, my brothers and sisters, who are going through very difficult times, different trials and tribulations, a way for us to find some sort of peace and solace is to look at the lives of those who are before us. Is to learn from the lives of the prophets, to look at the lives of the Sahaba, and to look at the lives of the Tabi'in and from the Salaf in general, some of which we've already mentioned. Because that will somehow make it easier for us to deal with. Because there are people before us who have dealt with far greater or far more difficult trials. <coughs> As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said, those who are afflicted with the most difficult trials are the prophets. They are the ones who will be tested the most. Thumma al-hamtal, thumma al-hamtal, and then the lights and the lights. So that a way for us to be able to cope with these trials and tribulations that we are going through is to look at the lights of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those of us who are going through illness, who are going through difficult times in terms of health, then a good way to find some sort of peace and solace is to look at the, to look at the life of Ayyub <coughs> alayhi To look at the life of the Prophet of Allah Ayyub, who for many years lived a very happy life, very comfortable family, wealth, and so on and so forth. When suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed for him to be sick, to become sick, and to become bedridden. And so this lack of health and this sickness resulted in him losing his family, resulted in him losing all of his wealth, and it resulted in him being alone at home. With no one else looking after him. All due to his lack of health, the sickness that he had. But how was 
his reaction to this? What was his reaction or how did he respond to this fitna that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put on him? Some of the ayat in the Quran mentioned how he conversed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or what he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From amongst those things that he said, he very simply said, you know, that, uh, that shaitan has, you know, hit me with some sort of ill. And you are the most gracious, most merciful. That was it. <coughs> Nothing, oh Allah, you know, give me help. Oh Allah, this, I can't take this anymore, and so on and so forth. Very simply, I have been, you know, I'm facing this problem. And you are the most merciful. Shaitan has depicted me with this trial, will put this on me. Oh Allah, you are the most gracious, most merciful. That's it. No complaint. And some, the person will say, for years he was killed. Years. No, you know, a few weeks, a little cold. No. It was for years. And that was his response. That was it. No complaint. And, and, and not looking for excuses and stop blaming his situation and blaming people and so on and so forth. No. He said to Allah, Allah, this is my situation. And you are the most gracious, most right. And so Allah told him, after so many years, he gave him back his, his health and his wealth and his family. Due to the patience that he had, I For those of us who are finding difficulty amongst our families, <coughs> we find it difficult amongst our our brothers, or maybe in family, or family in general, father, you know, uncles, and so on and so forth. For whatever reason it is. And it is maybe weighing very heavily on you. And look at the life of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam from a very, very young age. A young boy was taken away from his family by his own brothers. By his own brothers. And if you look at the way Allah Azza wa has related the story of the Quran in Surah Yusuf, the first alternative or the first suggestion that was made was let's kill him. Let's kill him. And they're their brothers, you know, he's, he's their brother. But yet their hatred and jealousy had reached a level that they were considering killing him. A young boy. But one of them said, no, let's not kill him, let's throw him in the world. And so, the story has you. Some of the most Assyrians say that he did not meet his father. And by the way, his own father said he loved him the most. A very close relationship he had with his father. And some of Assyrians say he didn't see his father for 40 years. Around 40 years. That's four decades, my brothers and sisters. A very long time. Yet, at the end of the story, in Surah Yusuf, what was Yusuf's response? <coughs> How did he respond to his brothers after his family had all come back and they've met, and he's met his father after you know almost 40 years? He says in Surah Yusuf. He says, "Min ba'dilan nazar al-shaytan bayni wa bayna al-ikhwah." This is his word, alayhi salam. He says, "And Allah brought you from the desert after the shaytan had got in between me and my brothers." If you look at the way he said this, it is as if he is putting himself to blame as well. He had some sort of part in it. Even though he, alayhi salam, was a young boy. It was like his fault. He didn't do anything wrong. 
And because of his brothers, he was separated for almost 40 years from his beloved father. Yet at the end of the story, he says, the Shaitan came between me and my brothers. It caused a conflict between us. As if he had <coughs> part in the This is how the prophets dealt with their trials. And there is no other or better example than Rasulullah. If you have lost a father or a parent, Rasulullah was born without a father. And his mother passed away when he was only six. And only two years later, his grandfather passes away. Only eight years old. And he's lost, he's lost almost all the support. And he's then left with his uncle, Abu Talib. He takes care of him for again almost 40 years. For many years. Only to then become ill and pass away. In the same year that the most beloved person to him, Rasulullah, his own wife, passes away as well. Same year. And that year became known as Amr, the year of grief. If one of us has lost a child, again, a very, very difficult trial, a very difficult test for a parent to see their child pass away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam saw all his children pass away, except for one. All of his children passed away while he was still alive, except for one. He passed away a few months or six months, as, as they say, after him, alayhi wa If one of us is feeling left out, abandoned, dishonored from his family, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was thrown out of Mecca. Was thrown out of Mecca. And as the hadith mentioned, he faced Mecca. Later on, many years later, when he moved to Medina, when he moved to Medina, he faced Mecca. And he said, if not for your people, I would never have left you. That's how much he loved Mecca. <coughs> if it wasn't for your people, I would never have left you. So if any of us, my brothers and sisters, are facing trials and tribulations and tests, no matter how big or small, you will find, inshallah ta'ala, some sort of peace and some sort of solace in looking at the lives of those who look before us. From the prophets, the messengers, the sahaba, the tabi'i, and so on. Hada وصلوا وسلموا على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يريدكم وذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وما تصنعون.